Hi, Don Kennedy again with ProMaster Home Repair and Handyman of Cincinnati. You know, one of the common home repair tasks we're requested to perform are to repair rotted soffits and fascia. So I thought I'd take a few minutes in this video to share with you how soffits and fascia on your home become rotted and ruined. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to reveal to you the cause of how your home's fascia and soffits become damaged, and then, of course, rot. We're going to illustrate some of the warning signs that there may be a problem with your fascia and soffit, and this will help you diagnose quickly whether or not you have a problem and hopefully forestall expensive repairs. And finally, we'll talk about some simple steps that you can take to reduce your chances of experiencing any of these costly repairs to begin with. But before I begin, I just wanted to tell you a quick story. You know, when I was new in the home improvement business, I would sometimes see homes that looked somewhat like this picture I'm showing you here. You're standing on the ground, you look up at a soffit, and you're asking yourself, well, wh why is it rotting? Why is the paint peeling? It's not exposed to the elements. You know, it doesn't see direct rain, even driving rain. It's kind of underneath something that should be protecting it. Why is the rest of it painted? And this part looks so bad. I, I never knew the answer to that question. So I'm just telling you that story because many of you may see this on your own home or someone else's home, and you may be wondering what's going on here. The best way to answer that question is to show you how a typical fascia, gutter, and soffit system, which is seen pictured here, which is very typical of a home in the Cincinnati area, how that's supposed to work to shed water away from the home. And then consequently, if this does not work correctly, how it can develop some of the problems that I've shown you in these pictures. What I've done here is made a little drawing. Pardon the low-tech whiteboard here, but it'll work. Uh, what I've drawn is a cross-section of the soffit, roof, and gutter region that's affected here that we were just talking about with some of those pictures prior. So here we have your shingles up here in black. The brown part right underneath, this represents the roof sheathing, okay? And then the fascia board that uh, is part of the structure of that soffit and is what your gutter here in red, this is the gutter, is attached to. Now there's something called drip edge and that's what I've made here in orange. It's this little piece here and it's usually made out of aluminum and the name kind of implies what it does. So we'll grab my blue marker here to kind of simulate water. So water comes down off your roof like this. You got a bunch of rain and it's coming down here and what happens is it drifts off the edge of the shingle and onto the drip edge. And then what happens is, is then it flows down that drip edge into the gutter, fills up the gutter. Now when that drip edge, for whatever reason, is broken, a couple of bad things can happen. Now let's pretend the drip edge is missing. And this is a common thing that I see in a lot of homes. There just isn't any. It was never installed. They just never bothered to put it in. Where is that water going to go? Well, some of it will fall into the gutter, but some of it travel back up the shingle and connect here where the fascia board lies and begin to soak the fascia board. And that's how these fascia boards rot out. And what's the gutter attached to? Gutters attached to the fascia board. When this gets soft and rots out and this thing fills up with water and gets really heavy, or in the winter fills up with ice, it's what causes the gutters to fall down off the house. Now, if that water continues, and then you have your soffit underneath here, like we saw in those pictures, if this begins to rot out, and now you get a gap here maybe, you know, as this is kind of all rotten out and is yucky, that water can then come in this direction and then can pool in this area or soak that wood that's underneath the soffit. So it, it answers the question for you, well this soffit underneath here, it's, it's protected from the elements. Why would it rot out? It doesn't see any rain and it's underneath there. So you know, how does it get wet? Because where the water is coming from the roof, it's finding its way in. Usually through the top, sometimes down here in the bottom or this entire um, fascia board is rotted out and the water just comes straight in. So there you can see an explanation for how these soffits get ruined 
and why proper maintenance and construction techniques with how far the shingle is off the roof, whether or not drip edge was installed, whether or not it was installed correctly, what shape or conditions it, it is in, how the gutters are sloped, if the gutters are backing up, right, like we see with ice damming in the winter, and then water starts to travel back up the roof. When that water melts, it gets in here and it just destroys the soffits and fascia. So there's several different ways this, this can occur, but we're gonna talk about things that you can do on your home to maintain this system properly to hopefully avoid this really expensive mess. Now, I'm not showing you this picture here to gross you out or insult your intelligence because I know any homeowner that saw this on their home would know quickly that there is a problem that they need to address. I'm simply showing it to you so that you can appreciate how much damage uh, can be done by allowing water to get inside the soffit. And the same is true with this picture. Water getting behind that fascia board either rots the fascia board or begins to soften the wood in which it's attached to. And then when that gutter fills up from rain becomes so heavy, it simply departs the house. And what I love about this picture, and I've pointed it out to you with the red arrows there, is the gutter is still attached to the fascia board. Now hopefully after you've seen those two pictures, I can convince you that this is a problem you need to make sure does not happen to your home. So I wanted to point out two things quickly that could alert you to a problem developing before it becomes too expensive. Here in this picture, you can see with the yellow arrows there, it looks like there is uh, something happening with that fascia board, but the rest of the soffit still looks like it's in good shape and is intact. So what we wanna do here is quickly address where the water is coming in. It's probably a drip edge problem or gutter sloping problem, very inexpensive to repair. We may even be able to save that fascia board. If not, that's not gonna be nearly as expensive as fixing all of those soffits. And we can correct this before any of that nasty rot and mold and water damage occurs that you saw in those previous slides. Another thing you can look for, and this isn't necessarily mean you have a problem. I just want you to take a look at this on your home because it's something you can easily spot from the ground. If you see black streaks that are coming down from your gutters, and of course this is a lot easier to see if you have a white or a tan gutter, this might be, and I, I emphasize the word, might be an indication that your gutters are overflowing. So next time you have a heavy rainstorm, I want you to peek out the window and see if in fact the gutters are overflowing because if they are, it means water can be backing up behind the gutter, getting into the fascia, soaking that board, and then running down into the soffit and therefore cause the problem that you see uh, in those other slides. Even better than knowing how to spot a problem before it gets too expensive is preventing the problem altogether. So three things you can do. One, keep those gutters clean and flowing, and that includes downspouts and drains, which are often overlooked. So for many of us in Cincinnati area, that means we need to clean our gutters three to four times per year, and that's gonna be dependent upon what kind of trees you have in your yard. Now, gutter guards aren't perfect. I've, I've spoken to people many times who feel like, well, I had gutter guards installed on my home three or four years ago. I don't need to have my gutters cleaned anymore. This is a great way to uh, cause the problems that you've seen in those previous slides because sometimes debris can still get in there and it lends itself to a false sense of security thinking that I never need to have those gutters cleaned or inspected. So even if you have gutter guards, please, periodic cleaning and inspection is a good thing. Second, keep wood fascia and soffits caulked and painted. That way, if you do get a little water on them, again, that wood will be protected. Finally, keep the animals and in insects away. Wasps, birds, if for some reason they love your soffits, it's a great safe place to build their nests. Well, this can also damage the, the, the wood and the material that's there. And certainly raccoons and squirrels and woodpeckers love to destroy this parts of your home. So if you can, keep the animals and insects away, and that will bode well for the longevity of that soffit. Well, as always, thanks for watching this video. We'd love to hear any of your feedback or comments uh, after this video or at the end of our blog page. And if you need help with a sofa or fascia repair, you know where to find us. If you're in the Cincinnati area, 513-724-0539. You can learn more about us at mastermylist.com. And we'd love to be your friend on Facebook. Keyword, Pro Master Craftsman. Happy remodeling.